Hi everyone, if you are watching this, that means that you have reached phase three of the Farm to Table project. And in phase three, we're going to be talking all about data collection today. So in phase three, as far as instructional videos, there will only be one instructional video. So I will resort back to this instructional video as 3.1. Um, again, as I had just stated before, this video is going to be all about the data collection phase. So in this phase, really students are going to be updating those daily logs on crops that they have chosen to grow um, in phases one and two, and they're going to be recording you know, some data and observations using Google Sheets. Um, this is where you could also have students you know, work with math where they're calculating average height or heights of plants and you're generating charts and graphs of the crops that they had chosen to grow after the nutrition segment in phase one. So again, this is the third phase of four total. And by now that you've reached phase three, that means that your students have completed the nutritional note catcher. They've kind of found that why for those plants. They then have designed the garden, they've planted the food, and phase three is really that growth phase. So with that being said, the phase, you know, where we're like, you know, the longevity of this phase is really dependent on what the students had chosen to grow and what environment you're growing in. So this may take, you know, several weeks, months, it really does vary. Um, as far as the website edition um, portion of this, you will find everything located for phase three, just where, like you did with phase one and two, but you'll find it under that replicate at your school tab. So that's where all of the materials for phase three will be posted, including this instructional video. Um, some of the things that you're going to need for this particular phase of the project is you're going to need a Google Sheets data table. Throughout this phase, students will be working with Google Sheets to import data, to jot down some observations or some conclusions that they may have about their plants or their experience. So if you click on this tab within this log here, um, the project update log, or on the actual Google site, I'll have a forced copy of the farm to table data log. Now, obviously, my students might be different than your students, as they will any students, you know, any classroom um, and any to every teacher is different. So you are welcome to make your own data log and you can make it look however you'd like. However, I did create a very simplistic one. Um, and if you click this link here, or if you click the link on my website, it will make you force a copy. However, once you have your copy, you can do whatever you'd like to it. Um, and this is kind of what I have students fill out. They have the date, and obviously you can make this longer. You can make different pages. So here, for example, I have stu students that are growing corn, squash, peppers, tomatoes. So those will be separate pages. Um, but we have the date. Um, different water that they would be given. So depending on you know what you really want your students to focus on, you may have a control plant, you may have some different variables. You know, what happens if I give my plant, you know, 3,000 milliliters of water rather than 50, you know? So it really is up to you on where you want to take this. Um, in my opinion, I really wanted my students to reap the benefits of actually growing crops, so I didn't really want any of my crops to be unsuccessful. However, there's an area here where students can place observations and notes. The great thing about Google Sheets, just like a lot of Google things, they can use you know, that talk to text option, which is great. Here I have average height, and that's something that I really wanted my, um, you know, the grade levels that I'm working with to understand um, you know, at the end of this where they'll add up all of the heights and you know, divide by the number of plants that they have. I think that's a really, um, really convenient skill for them and really, you know, great skill for them to be learning at this at this age level. Um, and then, you know, you have the students. So if you have multiple students working in groups or, you know, and, you know, one person's dedicated to a certain row of plants, it really is, um, as odd as it sounds, it really is dependent on, you know, what you want your students to be doing. So if you want it more freelance, you can leave it more open like this. However, if you want it more, you know, specific, you can assign different pages to students or different rows of, you know, crops or plants to students. It really is what you make it in a sense. So with that being said, here is the, the mock-up sheets that I had created. Again, you don't have to use this. It will allow you to make a forced copy if you choose to. Now, I think also as well as this, um, it would be really beneficial and you can pull videos from YouTube and other different um, streaming platforms like that. It would be really beneficial to also show your students how to create 
you know, bar graphs and pie charts from the data that you collect, whether it's, you know, the percent of corn that we, you know, have gotten versus, you know, the amount of squash. I think that that's another really valuable um, insight. I know that personally with my fourth graders um, now, they really struggle to read simple line plots or bar graphs because they're unsure of what that data represents. So I think that that's great you know, practice that builds off of those third, fourth, and fifth grade math standards. So if that's that age level you're looking to work with, I think that's a great kind of extra activity to show them. And again, you can create videos yourself. You can use videos on YouTube. I have before. It's been really beneficial. Um, people on sites like Edpuzzle have videos uh, created for that purpose as well. So, you know, those own tutorials are up to you and what you want them to create. But I think, again, that that would be really beneficial in the sense of, you know, it does correlate with those standards and can push them to understand what data we're looking at here. Obviously, aside from the Google Sheets data table, there is this instructional video here. Um, you know, obviously, you can learn about how to use the Google Sheets, as I just kind of showed you. Students in this phase are also going to be completing a, uh, like a reflection at the end of this phase um, using Flipgrid again. So similarly to the first phase and the second phase, there will be an end of video or end of phase reflection. So much like I've explained in phase one and phase two, you will create another reflection video the same way. I personally will be prompting, you know, my students with, you know, what what things went well, what what plants are you finding that are, you know, are growing the best, what, you know, what style, what plants, you know, what um, environment, what amount of water is allowing them to grow more efficiently, um, you know, and how can we measure growth? What are you using to measure growth? Are they using, you know, centimeter rulers? Are they using meter sticks? What kind of things are they using to measure? Are they using a graduated cylinder to measure the water? Are they not really measuring the water? Um, and, you know, just the different takeaways and observations that they're making of the plants. You know, oh, the, you know, the beans are growing much more efficiently than the corn. I wonder why that is. So it does get them to reflect and think and, you know, kind of comment on other students' work. So, again, with the Flipgrid, it is dependent on what you and your students need and want. Um, I personally would recommend doing the reflection multiple times throughout this phase just because Although this phase isn't very work heavy, it is lengthier because we are just, there's not much we can do to speed it up. We are, after all, waiting for plants to grow. So, you know, it might be beneficial to have an initial reflection, a midpoint reflection, and an ending reflection. That is completely up to you. I will also link Flipgrid into uh, the phase there on the Farm to Table website. Everything, again, will be linked into phase three if you need more information on that. But I just think that that reflection piece is going to be really powerful throughout this whole project. You can really kind of think what, you know, think and really understand what kids have on their minds. So that is kind of phase three wrapped up into one. And I know this video was, this instructional video was quite short, but it really is what you make it. Phase three, much like the rest of the phases, is really dependent on your students' needs. You can alter this um, to really work for your school environment, your school standards, your students, and you know what their capabilities are. So again, it is totally up to you. But again, phase three does involve working with Google Sheets, understanding measurement concepts and graphing concepts, and it does have that um, ending reflection at the end of phase three. So a very simple phase as we're waiting for our plants to grow and thrive in the environment we put them in. But ultimately towards the end of phase three, we should be seeing some really successful um, you know, plants being grown and will be ready to harvest by phase four. So once you're done with phase three, be sure to check out under the replicate at your school tab, phase four.